How do you know if you're a solo gamer? And what type of person is well suited to solo gaming? Let's see if we can agree on what features define people who'd love playing board games individually, today on Legendary Tactics. At risk of creating an utterly false stereotype about what features solo gamers tend to share, my goal today is to point out some points of similarity between the solo gamers I know, and to find out if these assumptions apply to the greater solo gaming hobby. I'm going to need your help with that. I'll also offer 10 solo game suggestions that connect to each category. Let's go to number 10. First and foremost, the solo gamers I know are people who are comfortable in their own skins. They're people who don't depend on others' opinions of them and who don't need affirmation from others. They're the kind of people who would feel comfortable going to a movie theater by themselves simply because they want to see the movie, not because they want to share the experience with someone else. A solo game that comes to mind for self-assured gamers is This War of Mine. It's a pretty heavy game, but it's also well suited thematically for someone who wants to dive into a situation where their own resourcefulness is all they have to survive in a war zone. Number nine. I've noticed on some of my previous solo game videos and the comments that solo gamers are people who are much more invested in gaming than any of their friends and family are. They play the games for the sake of the game, not for the social side of the hobby. This includes gamers who are tired of unreliable friends who are always too busy to finish what they started. So for hardcore players like this, a great game to dive into is Jaws of the Lion and or Gloomhaven. It really takes some serious commitment to finish all the content in these games and to really get your money's worth and sometimes going it alone is the best way to experience the full adventure. Number 8. A defining feature of solo gamers that I know is that they're detail-oriented. They're players who don't mind a complex rulebook, and they're not intimidated to sit down with a 40 or 50 pager and read it like a novel. This isn't to say that all solo gamers like complex games. In fact, many more light solo games have recently hit the market. However, solo gamers i found are very honest people who follow the rules because that's how the puzzle was designed. I mean, nobody's around to see if you're cheating. Complex games with a lot of moving parts don't frighten these gamers. A game like Mage Knight is one that is big, complicated, and it's really great for gamers willing to give up three to four hours and a dining room table for three to four days. By the way, if you enjoy content like this on solo games, I'd certainly appreciate it if you could take a moment to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Number seven, something else I've noticed about solo gamers is that they love narrative immersion. They really sink their souls into the world of the game and they experience it really deeply and viscerally. The game Sleeping Gods is fun for people who value good storytelling in their games. It's a campaign game about exploration and it's almost like playing a book. Number six, solo gamers are often very patient people. They take care to play the game properly and they don't mind spending a lot of time on a game. An upcoming solitaire game from GMT that our channel is really excited to feature is Mr. President, the American Presidency. This isn't an election game, but rather it's a resource management game about governing after you've won the election. And this one they're predicting will take eight to 12 hours to play a four year term. Haven't played it yet, but it looks really cool. And I'm guessing that a lot of solo gamers are really gonna love that game. Number five. While many games are beer and pretzel type games, solo gamers tend not to enjoy the elements that make social games fun. Solo gamers often prefer to avoid direct conflict, manipulation of other players, aggression, and the inevitable toxicity that sometimes comes with multiplayer games. Instead, they tend to prefer games like A Feast for Odin, where they relive Viking cultural achievements, adventures, and civ building. It's a complex and satisfying engine building puzzle. Number four. Without other players at the table, you might wonder why a solo gamer would crack a game out. And one good reason is that solo gamers can appreciate a game for the game's sake. Whether it's an elegant mechanic that plays almost like a dance, or whether it's just a beautiful aesthetic, solo gamers are people who appreciate beauty in all its forms. One new game that fits the bill is Arc Nova, where you design a zoo. It's got some beautiful artwork, and in its solo version, it's essentially an efficiency puzzle. Just before I finish with my top three, let me know in the comments if you think I've missed any characteristics of solo gamers. Number three, solo gamers are often people who have niche interests. Whether it's an obscure war that no one's ever heard of or a theme that doesn't capture the general interest, some games are hard to find motivated and interested opponents for. An example would be GMT's coin series that NATO's featured on our channel quite a bit. From Saigon to the French-Algerian War to the Finnish Civil War, these games are sometimes at their best when played solo. Number two, 
Another defining feature of the solo gamer is their capacity for imagination. Whether they're escaping to transdimensional planets in Gaia Project, or taking the role of a spirit in Spirit Island, or journeying through Middle Earth in Lord of the Rings, solo gamers are often people looking for an escape. And what better place to find it than in board games? Number one. Finally, one last feature that I'd like to mention is that solo gamers often love solving puzzles, challenges, and embracing the inevitable sense of accomplishment that comes with so many solo board games. Whether it's cracking a case in Sherlock Holmes' Consulting Detective, beating the program in Robinson Crusoe, or hitting score thresholds in the solitaire version in Cascadia, solitaire gamers love to walk away from a game with a sense of achievement. If the features that I've mentioned describe you, then it's entirely possible that you are indeed a solo gamer. So let me know if my observations have been at all accurate, and thanks so much for your time. If you're looking for more solo games to try, check out one of our other solo videos. 